Last time on Fowler's Fishery. My hole got filled with water. <laughs> oh, fuck me! I used child labour services to install a camera with me. Marvellous, I've got a camera. Right, do you have a drill? Because my ex fiance nicked mine. Tom Maker came to visit. And I dyed my liquid blue. In this episode, we will be landscaping. Why? Well, to make it pretty, really. It gives the fish something to nibble on, get involved with, and creates the first proper features around the edges of the lake. There was many types of plants that I needed to buy for the beginning of the fishery. I ordered the reeds online from a company that I found. Now, these were a mix of irises and bulrushes that we spread kind of randomly around the outside of the lake. We put the bulrushes, or tried to at least, in areas that we thought they could kind of expand and grow on. Now, we've talked about the plants, but now it's time to go and buy them. You will be amazed at the lot of them. I tell you what, I've seen a lot of people planting them actually. Pie. I took Mum because, well, she's always been into plants. She loves them, and it's all she ever gets bought for her birthday. That's all to keep the greenhouses. That's incredible. So we've just got to the laurel area and there'll be lots of laurels and that's specified in the landscaping plan that'll be going round the lake. And basically a laurel is a type of tree or hedge, I suppose, oh, if you plant nice. them close enough together, there's what's called an evergreen, yeah, which uh, means uh, unlike yeah. the leaves that are falling on me now, it, it, they actually stay green control. all year round. There's two types of laurels that we've got here. One is Portuguese laurel, which has got slightly thinner leaves, also, slightly slower growing plant, and the leaves. other one is a cherry laurel, which is a larger leaf, yes, bigger yes. plant, faster growing, which is what we got specified in our landscaping plan, and we're going to go and have a look at now. Nigel, control the board. Okay, so these are 25 pounds each. Oh, wow. It's not been too bad with the rain, has it, I think? Yeah, yeah. It's about 30 we need them, I think it was. That's yeah. going to be about one and a half for me. We're not looking to create like the thickest, craziest thing in it's the world. It's what I did it's down the other side. It's more just a bit of a screen yeah. that stops people from looking yeah, through I it Yeah, I think easily. I kind of, I looked it up and I kind of went probably like that inside. So, yeah, that's plus that, isn't it? 20, 30 of those. But before we do though, what was the other ones you said at 20? That you so 750 pounds. And how yeah, much a, bigger, smaller are those? Basically like screened area of where we live. This is what I'm trying to do. So okay. that when people come in that so drive, that was, I think I mentioned it before. So we're better off with this height because the bank we've got has been flattened. It's above what we I live, call a, a normal poke and to post. And these are the best way of doing that because these Tense, literally stay the banks up, just that like again, this. flattened. Yeah. All but year then we've round. got the shed. Perfect. 30 of those. I'll, I'll pace it out when I get back. If I if I needed any more, oh, yeah. I'd just let you know. But I think 30 is bang on. No. At Rupert Goddy's, we took the opportunity to buy a lot of laurels. See, on the eastern side of the lake, where the track is that runs up to the fishery, we wanted to create a boundary between the track that runs up to the lake and our property, just to give it that little bit of extra privacy. There was loads of laurels in stock at the time we went, and I actually got a great deal on them at around £20 a plant for a 1.5 metre tree. I've got a couple of those anyway, Benedict, that I've grown. I've got an ornamental crab apple, which is a standard Lots of one. trees that I don't understand. Laurel is actually a form of hedging. However, it looks more like a tree to me than a hedge. But after a few years, it interlocks and creates a completely solid unit that you can barely see through. There's just one thing to say on that, if you don't mind. I don't mind. The hedge loses its leaves. like this yeah. and that's where all the laurels we're going to go on top of. Yeah. 
Where's she gone? We we will lose her. We didn't mean. Wait, good. Bit like a child. This isn't your only. This is just phase one. You can come back for phase two and phase three. Yeah. Oh, you got Martin here now. You can come down and say, "I want to come and get some of these." Oh, the variegated holly standard. We can have some of those. Just let the planners bugger off. Did I say that? No, I say not. Is it going to rain tonight, is it? Yeah, yeah, I wonder how many reeds we're going to get in tonight. Jack, the lake boy. You remember Jack from episode one, we were putting the fences up. Well, Jack came back and he was the perfect person to help my mum install the plants all around the edge of the lake. Well, to be honest, I was trying to help, but I wasn't doing a very good job. You see, Jack has just got in, but he's got in the deepest bit. This corner is actually the deepest bit, so I do fear that if he falls in, I may actually go and get me wellies or my chest waders on in a minute and go and help a little bit, but I have got to be out in an hour. But where Jack is, he's basically got that much that he stood on like this. And then if he puts his foot there, he goes straight into nine foot of water. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, should be interesting. But what, what is going on is we've got a load of reeds that you'd have seen. And that consists of bulrushes and irises, which turned up today. And we've got to get them straight in, otherwise they're going to die. So we've got this marginal shelf, which currently we've only got about this much water covering it, which is perfect to walk around. It's nice and wet. And we've, what we've got to do is take the reeds out of like the baskets that they come in and plug them into the margin. Um, now the water's over them, it means that they'll live and they'll have a better chance of living when they're in than when they're out. Uh, and then what we can do is over the next week, we can now raise the water up another foot up the stems of the roots and the rest of the reeds to the finished height of the lake. But you see, they had a crack at putting some in earlier. Oh, here. Yeah which went quite well, but it's been a little bit of guesstimation work with linear meters and things like that so far as to how many reeds actually needed to order and put in. And how we've got it going is this. My mother, crazy lady over there with the Wild West hat, is currently pushing a wheelbarrow with the reeds on over to Jack that then uses the shovel, creates the hole and drops the reed straight into it, moves on to the next one. But we're a little bit fighting against the weather today. So let's see how we get on. Now, to install a reed, you have to do it in a certain way. When we built the lake, we did it with a margin all around the edge. Now, a margin is a shelf that comes out around about a foot under the surface, in this case, of the lake. What we did was bring the water up just to the point where it was around an inch over the marginal shelf, so we could still see and work with it. Getting into a pair of waders, we'd create a hole with a kind of trowel slash stick type thing, and then plant each reed within that. You had to really plug them into the gap, otherwise you run the risk of them being buoyant and just popping out of the holes. So once you've pushed it in, you have to press down all the clay around the edges to make sure it doesn't come out. But fair play to mum, 67 years old, outside with her hat on, staying safe from the sun, helping Jack get all the reeds in. Hello crazy lady with the Wild West hat. I simply couldn't do it without her. Don't have a clue about. Right, that's something we made a start. Oh. Ooh. This is my aerator, which will fluff all the water up. I have no clue how it's connected. I now know how it's connected. Ah, okay. I've got one of those in my podcast van actually that goes into that, I think. I think. Um, so that could work because we do actually need to get this on because we have had a little bit of algae blooming in the last few days. So while they're planting the reeds, I'm going to stay on dry land and um, have a little play around with this. 
Um, I don't even know which way up this thing goes. I'm guessing it's like this. Yes! Right, I'm gonna need a pair of waders. Oh, I'm hoping it doesn't shit it down. <laughs> eh. These are the Rolls Royce of waders. Doesn't matter what anybody says, that is quite simply the ones. This is like, if, if an angler sees another angler in like... Him picking. There we go, right. As it's starting to piss it down, right. Right. Let's see what we can do here. Yeah. Um. There's not much of a shelf left really anymore for me to walk down, is there? This is the thing, you know? Now I saw a silver par. What that is for, I should probably check before kind of doing this. Um, yes. I'm sure it's nothing. It's probably just a spare part. Right. Oh, fucking hell, it's now pissing it down, isn't it? I've got to be at dinner in an hour. Here we go. <laughs> Look at that, never even been skiing. Oh, the cum's packer. Oh. 900 pounds, this. 900 pounds. Right, where's that shelf? There it is. Ah. <laughs> Sensational effort. Right, what I'm going to do is this is the balancing pipe, which I was telling you about the other day. That's the balancing pipe. That's a really... It turns out it gets deeper <laughs> there, which I didn't realise it did. Um, and there's a real steep shelf in front of me, which you obviously can't see, but it is there. And I'm very much aware of it. So I'm gonna try. Oh, you fucking bastard. And loop this over here. So it doesn't, there we go. Drift off into said lake. I did a thing. Everybody witnessed me do manual labor, didn't they? I need to go and help that man up there really and actually have a go at putting a reed in, so. Maybe I should go and do that. The problem is, between me and him, I, there is a deep spot, and it's slightly wacky. And as you can see, I'm not being the tallest lad in the world. We don't have what is called a lot of wiggle room, and I'm currently in the shallow corner. <coughs> so, I'm slightly worried. How are we going to get to that area over there? Jack, I'm manual labouring. Now, the problem is, is if I fall off the plateau, that is really good. Right, right, that's deep. That's deeper. That's really deep. That's really deep. Baby steps. Oh, I really don't like this. Now, as much as it looks like I'm just dicking around, actually, it was amazing how firm the bottom was. After walking on lakes nearby down this road that are also built on clay, I expected the bottom like to be a this. lot softer than it actually was. Oh. And the first few casts from last episode with Tom were getting decent drops on the lead, which... I don't know if that's just while the lake is as it is now, or whether that'll still be the case in a couple of years. I think we're over the dangerous bit. I've got some wedgie I have. Roll, oh, this is getting... Cool, that's warm there. 
I'll tell you something, that is proper warm there. And I haven't pissed, honestly. <laughs> I'm very honest, I'd say if I did. Oh. I am Moses. Whilst at the plant shop, I couldn't resist picking up a few different feature plants. On the right hand side of the lodge, if you're looking at it face on, we decided to buy some other types of laurels, but these times they were on a great big long tree with a kind of ball shape at the top. These have been growing for several years and the first thing I thought, apart from them looking absolutely stunning, was that they would be absolutely ridiculously expensive. Well, to be fair, they weren't that bad. For a few of these trees and two hollies, it cost me around a thousand pounds. But I think that extra feature just next to the lodge really goes that extra mile to make it look great and show a few different established plants near the building. I made it out. Right, should we go have a look at the concrete pad over there? Come around here. We didn't get too much footage of it, to be fair. We now have our finished concrete slab. Um, for the glamping pod to go on. As you can see, this big one is the actual accommodation where the glamping pod will be. Pipes are coming up where around the bathroom will be over there. So we've got about six inches of concrete to make a flat base. And then this bit here, you may be wondering, this is actually for the hot tub to sit on. Because when you've got that much water in a hot tub, it's actually better to put it on a concrete plinth. So what we've been trying to do is get all the levels right around here, because what we want is there's not actually that many fisheries out there that have disabled access for anglers. It is actually quite rare, and especially in holiday lakes, and lakes that have been altered after like being created rather than thought about from the stocks, tend to have really steep banks and stuff. So from where the car park is over to my right, up the path to here, all of this is gonna be one level. To get out of the lodge, onto the patio, down the path, so it'll all be one level and we'll have little wheelchair friendly ramps basically everywhere in porcelain so that you can wheel in and out of the lodge and it's fully disabled access. And down here, it does lower down a bit to where the swim is. And we've got two steps that will come down where I am now, here and here. But to the left, we'll also have that ramp access so that you're able to get a wheelchair down onto the lake side where the swim is to be able to cast round the lake. Which brings me on to the next thing. This area where the swim is going to be, I'm going to, I've ordered some composite sleepers because I was worried if I got wooden sleepers that they'd rot over time. I've seen them rot on other lakes that are out there. So I'm going to have two composite sleepers sitting all around the edge here to create the peg where your rods go, where you push your bank sticks in or use a pod. And I've been thinking what I'm going to actually fill this area with. So I don't want it porcelain or anything modern. I want it to be proper fishing. And I've been thinking about using the chopped up rubber car tires because the wood bar might leave crap all the way through the lodge. So I was thinking about using these chopped up bits of rubber car tires basically. And the reason that we've lowered where the swim is next to the lake is because when the water comes up another foot, it's going to be lapping the edge of those kind of sleepers that will be down here. So the water will be right close to where the sleepers are and you step up or use the ramp to get to where the lodge and the patio is. And that's so that if you're netting fish or slinging a fish up in the margin, the water's nice and close to where that swim is. But obviously if it did come up and kind of by a few inches and flood this space, you're not gonna risk the lodge or anything like that. So that's the thinking in this corner. As you can see in the positioning of this swim as well, we've got it so that there's a nice deep hole to my left. So if you're playing a fish on the right or on the left, it can dive right or dive left. So we've really thought about this area and hopefully over the next few weeks as the porcelain arrives, it's gonna to start to look even more landscaped. So we are now into October. After a heavy night of rain last night, the lake has actually only come up around about half a foot. Now in the corner, we have a, basically like what's in your sink, a method of if the lake comes up, it'll run away, an overflow pipe connected to the ditch and everything has been running perfectly. 
You join me in the deepest corner of the lake over by the telephone pole behind me. And you can see down here that after just a couple of months, the growth from the reeds is absolutely remarkable. That what was planted down here just a few months ago was only a couple of little clumps of bulrushes. And that has now gone crazy. The irises and the bulrushes have grown like mad in this corner. I think it's where the wind hacks down this end into the corner brings over a load of nutrients and helps to make them grow. One thing I would like to sort out, which I wasn't too pleased it was left like, is this bank over here has got a really nice slope to it, where here it comes straight up. Uh, we just didn't want to get too close to the pole doing lots of work. But I think at some point I might want to take that back at a bit of an angle, kind of how like Joey's explaining now, a little bit of an angle to the bank so it's not so um, viciously upright. However, what it does enable you as an angler is this big deep corner down here where I'm sure you'll see some big carp cruising through. It does enable you to look down well, bait up uh, and see what's going on easily. What I'm doing is waiting um, for the reeds to grow over the course of the few months and monitor how much the water comes up when we have periods of rain. Over the winter, um, I can add attachments to my overflow pipe and I can bring the whole level of the lake up at least another foot if I wanted to. So I quite like to fill out this corner. Um, you see we've had a little bit of subsidence because of the rain, but we can re-smooth all of that again with the bucket. It's amazing how much damage just water flowing off a field actually does to clay and shows how delicate it is really. If you come down here where it's gone in, look at what just a minute trickle has done to this area of the bank here. Now obviously it's not too much of a problem because I'm not bringing the water up any higher for the moment. You see the plants sat on the marginal shelf there, but it does really destroy the edges. But don't worry, over time I'm going to continue to seed the banks and try and make them come out nice and green along here next time on Fowler Fisheries. I stopped the lake. There we go. Right, take the... <laughs> and it slapped me in the face. Yeah.